it's national championship week for the dogs. So we're going to bring in a damn good dog that y'all probably know. Her name is L Duncan from ESPN. Oh, 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 She's oh. already barking. She's ready to go. Uh, L, I, I just want to say thanks for coming on. A surprise for uh, our viewers. I didn't really tip anybody off about that. But I've been impressed, L, with you come out of the gate this season. You're on Paul Feinbaum, and you have your hot take about Stetson. And look, this is a hot take industry. But a lot of people don't own up when they have a cold take. And you've done that. I tip my cap to you. Listen, uh, first of all, gentlemen, thank you for having me uh, on the show. Big fan. Um, I feel like if you are going to be very loud and wrong, you have to match that same energy um, on your contrition tour. Um, it wasn't really a hot take. Like the, I think what I'm most annoyed with myself by is that I try my best, I really do, despite how extra I am, to not be inflammatory for the sake of being inflammatory. Like, I think there's a lot of that in our industry, right, where people don't really feel a certain way, but they pretend to sort of create theater. Um, while I do ham it up a little bit on Paul Feinbaum, I was. Like, I, would, I meant it when it was just sort of like, I just, I didn't mean to be as nasty as I was, but <laughs> I, I think I said it today on Paul. Like, I just felt like, and I, I don't think I'm the only one. I'm just the most vocal one that a lot of the success of Georgia last year was really wrapped up with their defense. And I felt like in the same way, as I said today on Paul's show that I am a, a Broncos fan that year that they won the Super Bowl in 2016, like we all know it wasn't because of Peyton. And like, I, I love Peyton, but I also wanted Peyton to retire that year because I felt like if given about another seven to 10 minutes in that game, he would have tried to give it away. Right. So it was more coming from a place of like, thank you so much, Stetson. But like, I don't want to see you do this again against a potential Bama. I felt like, because we all just sort of assume Bama will be there in the end, that if Bama had to face Stetson again, they would have figured him out and it wouldn't go well. And I was uh, incredibly wrong. Like Stetson earned the benefit of the doubt last year for what he did in the national title run. And instead of sort of being like an appreciative fan and and enjoying the journey and just being glad that for the first time in my life, I watched the dogs win a national championship. I was like a horrible fan. I was a fatalist. I was chicken little and it was stupid. So I'm glad to call myself a big fat L on anyone that will allow me to say that. And I said that at the time, like if I'm wrong and I hope I am, I will fall on the sword and take my medicine. So here's me taking my medicine boys. Well, L, as a, as a Georgia grad and also a Broncos fan, um, <laughs> And that's a it's random. I know. Uh, I, I I know where you're coming from, and and I actually had you know I mean I cover the team day to day, and it's been a long time, so I don't really get fired up one way or the other about anything anymore. But I was more worried about it from Stetson's point of view, kind of like, all right, dude, you know this is a this is a a, a really beautiful horse and a really big sunset, and we're all going to watch you just ride off into it. Right. And, uh, he didn't. And I was like, there's no way. There's no way you're going to go back to back. I mean, come on. Yes, what in the world? Yes. Nobody goes back to back. And then right. you are. Um, and I, you know, I wasn't, I don't get the luxury of kind of, well, first of all, I haven't been on that Paul Feinbaum, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of truth serum, you know, whatever they stab you with on there to get people to say stuff. I don't know if it's oh, just yeah. it's, it's an environment or what, but everybody gets a little jazzed on Paul. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I had the benefit of not doing that. But uh, I mean, I don't think it was that crazy of a take. Uh, the only thing, the, the only time I really was like, "Oh no, oh no," I think she, I think she stepped in it here was with the Anthony Richardson thing earlier this year. Uh, when <laughs> I think, I, yeah, I think you said you'd rather have Anthony Richardson. Um, maybe down the road, I don't think Anthony Richardson right now. Uh, or maybe you said one of them. I'm like, did I say that? No, or not, maybe, I maybe didn't say that. You, you just thought he was. You liked him more because he was more talented. That he had more ceiling. I can't remember what it was. It was early, but uh, either way, um, like Wes said, you're uh, Jake, like, listen, Jake, you've got more I have had, most. I've had so many mea culpas. I don't remember. I say a lot of things. I might have after those first couple of weeks fall in love with Anthony Richardson, like everybody else did. And then come to my senses a little bit. Um, because again, Georgia is about the team, right? And we know that it's the same way that if Kirby is sort of building 
this legacy and building this dynasty in uh, essentially the same vision that Nick Saban did with Alabama, sort of the one thing, the pitfall for Nick Saban is that he cannot cure the quarterback position, right? Or at least for many years, it was as if like he sort of acquiesced and said, I'm just going to win all these national championships, with my defense, and that's going to be fine. And it felt like for me, to your point, Jake, like, this is the best story, Stetson. Like, everyone was down on you, including your own team. Like, let's not forget that. Georgia didn't choose him either. They didn't want him to be their guy. Um, Kirby said that. He said that, right? So, like, instead of just sort of, like, you got the ultimate last laugh. Ride into the sunset. Like, this is a storybook ending for you. It will never be better right now. It will, be, it will never be better than it is right now. And that's how I felt. Um, but we were wrong because even – even if they don't repeat, which I'm hoping that they will do, but even if they don't repeat, Stetson was so much more integral. And I think despite having arguably his worst game of the season in the Peach Bowl, I don't think anybody could watch this year and not say like Stetson in many instances was the reason that we won. And that was always my critique of him is that I felt like he was complimentary to what they were doing, but that they were not winning because of him. They were winning because of the defense. So I think he sort of turned us on, the, on our head a little bit there. Listen, yeah. it's not the worst take I've ever had. It will not be the last bad take that I've ever had. It just, I, I don't think, I, I've been talking to David Pollack about this. I talked to him about this a few months ago. And I was like, please tell me why I'm wrong, right? This is before we started going on a tear and a run. And, and because again, to me, I don't give a damn if you beat Vanderbilt. That's not what this is about, right? Like you've got to beat Bama or the big games, the LSUs of the world. And he said, I think the thing is, is that it's just hard for some people to come to terms with the fact that Georgia didn't choose them. And so if Georgia didn't choose them, then there's something they must know. And if they know something, then how can I just give in to the fact that maybe this quarterback did just really improve and get better? And he did. So we were wrong. At least I was. So he has the peach bowl where he starts off red hot and then cools off and then puts the game on his back. And that's... Yeah. Kind of what the argument is, is, you know, he had uh, moments this year where he wasn't the best, but he's played the best in the best games. And he had, you just can't figure him out. You can't put this guy in a box, right? I mean, statistically, his best game was the Peach Bowl, but he also makes some of his most head scratching mistakes, Correct. which is kind of the whole story on Stetson Bennett's career uh, in a nutshell. What were you thinking watching Stetson's game? unfold because I know our, our message board was freaking out thinking this was probably going to be his last game for a little bit. And then he wasn't really delivering until he did to Arian Smith and to Kiaris Jackson on that, that game winning drive, which needs to be set to the, the theme song of Titanic uh, in perpetuity <laughs> because it's just so beautiful. And then he throws it to A.D. Mitchell for the game winner. What were you thinking as all that unfolded? So what's funny, Wes, is that because, again, I spent so much of last year sort of gripping and waiting for Stetson to F up, I had like a huge sense of calm. I was actually much more concerned with our defense who could suddenly not stop CJ Stroud, who decided to become Mike Vick for some random reason in the Peach Balls. Like, when did this happen? Um, and I, I, I thought that Stetson was playing hero ball. And I think that was what was encouraging to me was that I saw Stetson in the beginning of the game, to your point, like do really well, execute to perfection you know, be accurate, like sort of we expect him to be. In the middle, it felt like he was playing hero ball. It felt like he recognized, oh, like this defense is going to give up some points and now we got to keep up and I'm going to just do too much. And I think that's always sort of been such a thing is that he tries to do a little bit too much. But I didn't think, I did not think like to myself, if this comes down to the end, Stetson won't be able to figure a way out to do it. I was actually much more concerned with if they do score here, and I believe that they can, is it too much time and will the defense let them move right down the field, which essentially is exactly what they did. So I was actually like eerily calm when it came to Stetson. I did not find, I found his play to, again, not be great, but I did not find him to have done anything um, that was so egregious that you would look back on this either way and go, but I have huge concerns in the national championship. Like I think that what Kirby has built, what Kirby's doing so well is despite the fact that statistically it was one of his best games and despite the fact that like now you're headed to a second straight national title the first thing he wanted to do was like criticize Stetson and be like if he plays like that again we're not going to win the national championship and I just think that Stetson is from from the people I know that are sort of behind the scenes that work with UGA that that know Stetson while he is incredibly humble in front of the camera they're like he is really motivated by the amount of people that just for no reason at all have decided to make him a punching bag. And it very much motivates him. 
And, uh, and so I hoped that that would kick in. I hoped that the guy who, who we saw at the SEC championship last year, and even the guy that we saw for many parts of the national championship, right, before he did what? He closed the game. He's become the best closer, I think, in college football. I just thought that, like, somewhere inside that would kick in and he'd be like, no, I'm not doing this again. Like, I'm not going to leave any doubt. And he didn't. So uh, last, last one before we let you go. This isn't all about Stetson. You said you're still a fatalist. And I'm not going to lie. I, I, I don't know if the people watching this are going to enjoy uh, this take from me right now, but I'm just being honest. I just don't have a good gut feeling about this game. And maybe something will change between now and TCU. Maybe I just have too much Munson in me. But what are you thinking about this TCU matchup, L, and how are you – uh, going to take it all in? Are you going out to the game? I know you're in Indy for the last one. Um, how are you looking ahead and, and looking forward to the dogs versus the frogs? Yeah, I'm uh, definitely going. I will be there. I'm very excited. Um, you know, I had to run it back again. I'm superstitious as well. So I felt like, well, I was there last year. So like, I have to go this year or they won't win. Because you know, it's all about me. I'm a narcissist. Um, and <laughs> so, uh, so, okay. And I was super concerned after the LSU game. I was concerned during the game. I'm like, what happened to this defense? Is it suddenly giving up 500 yards a game? Like, what is happening? But I went back and watched the national championship or at the Peach Bowl, as I'm sure. It felt like the national championship. Fell. It did feel like the Natty, right? Um, that's how, how many years I lost of my life watching it. Um, there was so many uncharacteristic mistakes for Michigan. Like, they spotted TCU at least 20 points and potentially 28 points in the first half alone. Um, I think that, that what happened with Ohio State is that I sort of hinted, hinted on that. They were very much prepared for a different sort of plan for Ohio State. I think they were planned for those receivers. They were planning for C.J. Stroud to stay in the pocket, which is what he does. Like All the criticism of C.J. Stroud has been that he does not – move that he very much sticks to the system that he won't ad lib that he won't go out there and do you know really anything to sort of extend a play beyond what's called and he flipped it on his head he had the absolute game of his life they were not ready for what ohio state did because that's just not what a cj stroud does and what really ohio state does either so i do think that with tcu coming they know what TCU does, right? Like, you know Max Duggan's going to run. I think, like, a, a huge part of this is whether Kendra Miller's going to play or not. If they don't have their running back, you know they're going to have to throw more. I'm incredibly concerned with Quinton Johnson. The dude is averaging 150 yards a game in the last two games, which is sort of nuts. But I just feel like what TCU does, sort of Georgia will be able to plan and prepare for that. I'm concerned if, Wes, this is a close game in the fourth quarter because I don't think we're going to cover. Like, this spread is insane. And I'm so pissed that Vegas did this. Like, why would you make them the underfrogs, the biggest underdog <laughs> of all time in national time, in national championship history? It's so stupid, and I hate to steal from Nick Saban, but it's rat poison. However, this team has made a whole entire season on adversity and finding a way to win. And so if it is tight, they have the confidence that they won't give up. We need to strip, we need to steal all of their confidence and put our foots on their neck immediately. Um, and I that's what worries me about TCU, despite the fact they've never been on a platform this big and we have, they just have been dealing with adversity a lot. I actually think, guys, that it helped Georgia tremendously that they had to overcome two 14 point deficits, that this was in, in no way a gimme. I think it was good for them that they had to play a game from behind because they hadn't all year long. So, Long story short, long story long, I'm not as concerned as U.S. Okay. I, I, I do think that it is your PTSD and your conditioning from being a Georgia fan that tells you we can't have nice things, and we especially can't have nice things two years in a row. But I, I, it I, think it's ours to, I think it's ours to lose, Wes. It's the back-to-back -back thing. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Point, Vegas, Vegas is going to take a bath if Georgia, doesn't, if, Georgia doesn't, if Georgia doesn't cover in this game. Because – yeah. TCU, the public money, 93% of the money right now is on TCU to cover that spread. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. It's got every that's a every, number, man. Everything that is it that's normally in play for and listen, this is this has no bearing on anything. I'm just saying it's a it's a forecast, I guess. Um, every indication of a sucker bet or a sucker line is in place right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not moving it, it's only moved a point, all the money's coming in. Um, it's almost like they're getting what they want. They made a lot of money off Georgia Ohio State because 
Everybody was on Ohio State or so many people were on Ohio State to money line. So many people were on Georgia to cover. Neither one of those things happened. Vegas just raped them in. So uh, we'll see what happens in this one. But it's got every indication of a sucker uh, of a sucker line. So I'm interested. Are in you as nervous? Are you as nervous, Jake, as Wes seems to be? Or what? I, I Can mean, we... Jake doesn't get nervous. Wes, Wes is kind of our resident fan. Listen, I did go to Georgia. Okay, Wes, Wes gets to let his fan flag hang out a little bit more. Um, I'm not much of one anymore, just having to be in press box after press box. I got like that Pavlov's, you know, I got the the, the rubber band on the wrist over and over and over again, not that it's been very long. Uh, but, you know, I, I do think George is going to win, and I, I would probably pick him to cover. Wow. Wow. Right. I mean, what's the line right. at right now? Is it still at 12 and a half? 12 and a half, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Your lips to the football god's ears. Let's go. You guys are making me feel better. Uh, I appreciate it, L. Um, Thank you, guys. Best of so luck much. out dogs. there in LA. Have mm -hmm. fun. Go dogs. Go Broncos. We'll yeah. see you out there. Well, no, no <laughs> not the bro. We didn't have to go. We there don't have to bring them up. They're they're not a real team yet. So um, <laughs> go dogs, and I'll see you out there, dog fans. And by the way, I don't give a damn what SoFi says. We'll find a place to tailgate. Yeah. Let's go, dogs. Hur, hur. I want grown men barking at children in LA. That's what I want. <laughs> the energy I'm bringing. Let's go, dogs. Let's win. See you, Elle. <laughs>